Today, we're gonna talk to you a little bit about smart harnesses. This factory radio has factory Sirius XM that she uses. It has a factory backup camera. It has the OnStar. It has all the steering wheel controls. And these are all features she wants to keep. So we're gonna use the PAC RP5 smart harness to do this. So as we said, for this car, we're gonna use an RP5 GM31. What this is gonna allow us to do is interface with the car and retain all the accessories we're interested in retaining. So for example, right now we have the steering wheel control plugged in. Right here on the side is a dial that you have to set to tell it what type of radio you're connecting it to, which is right here on page two. So we're putting in a Pioneer. So we want to switch that to seven. You want to make sure you switch it before you plug it into the car or it's not going to work. Uh, it has two wires on it. This is, you have the eighth inch looking style and you have the blue with the yellow stripe, Kenwood JVC, pretty much everyone else. Then you have the factory side of the cables, which are here, here. This is gonna plug into the car. Uh, you have these RCAs that are hanging off. Now, depending on what smart harness you go with, these are different things. Some of these allow you to retain the factory XM. Others just allow you to retain the factory aux. We're not gonna retain the factory XM. We want full control of it. Uh, if you try to retain the factory XM through a module like this, well, which this is telling us, yeah, you get very little functionality. You actually only get it controlled through the steering wheel. So it's like, if you want to go from channel 50 to channel 105, you have to hit the button 55 times. So we're not going to retain the factory, but that's what this RCA would be for. Then it comes with this cable right here. This cable allows us to keep the camera as well as the subwoofer and a center channel if one exists. This is just gonna plug right in. Most of the GM modules that come with this cable, make sure you check to see if there's any supplemental instructions for these. Sometimes there are and you have to move some of these pins around to do things. Looking at these instructions, we don't have that. So that's a good thing. Then you have the output side, which are these right here. When you're installing one of these, like all packs, you wanna make sure you check your wire coloring because uh, they're trying to update all these modules so that these wire colors relate to the radio you're putting in. So for example, this particular one has been updated. So the purple white wire here is gonna be reversed. The light green wire is going to be parking brake and the pink wire is gonna be your vehicle speed sense output. Now depending on what type of install you're doing, these three wires, you may or may not hook them up. If you want the emergency brake to control the functionality of the radio, go ahead and hook it up to here. If you're gonna do some form of a bypass or something like that, just cap it off. VSS, even if you're doing a navigation system like this, I strongly recommend not using. These radios don't need them anymore. They have a hybrid mode that they work in, and this is mainly for Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine. They don't use this feature anymore. Pioneer, I don't know why they still have in the harness. So then you have your regular radio side, the, the normal harness wires where you have your pairs, your white, your gray, your green, your purple. White is driver, gray is passenger, green is driver's rear, purple is passenger rear. You have a blue wire, which is gonna be power antenna, or amplified antenna in this case. You have your blue white, which is gonna turn on the amplifier. So if you have a Bose system, this is, or a premium sound system, this is what's gonna wake that up. You have your orange white, which is illumination. Black is system ground. Yellow is system 12 volts and or memory, depending on what you wanna call it. And of course, tucked down in here, with the relay already on it, you have your red wire. The relay's on there, so if you want to add a backup camera or any other feature coming off of this, it has enough amperage to turn on more than just the radio. Another nice thing is that it does come with the antenna adapter. The RP5s all come with antenna adapters. The other wire here is gonna be this guy. This is gonna plug into the chime module. This is what's gonna give you your backup ding, your headlights are on, your keys forgotten, all those fun things. On the side of it, it has a volume control. A lot of people ask about this. You can control the volume of this. Just put some Velcro on this and stick it somewhere close to the inside of the dash. Instructions, we've said it a million times, we'll say it again. Make sure you, if not read, peruse through the instructions for this. Sometimes they have special notes for vehicles. For steering wheel controls, they have two different modes. You have factory mode and aftermarket mode. Factory mode is gonna allow you to use the steering wheel controls to control OnStar and your factory XM. If you don't need those functionalities, 
because you're not using the, the factory XM and you can control the OnStar from the mirror, you can put it into aftermarket mode. Aftermarket mode allows you to use all those steering wheel controls for the aftermarket radio. So like you can use the push to talk feature for like CarPlay or Android Auto. You can also reprogram them. They come factory programmed here. You can reprogram them so you can do multi-touch. So like it just has a picture of a phone. You can do, you, you can make the buttons if they have two pictures on them, do those two functions with the exception of VR. Voice recognition is a one function button because you have to hold it for three seconds in order to engage it. And on the back page here, it's gonna go ahead and detail out those choices that you have for your steering wheel controls. So one other thing is it has this little piece of tape on here. What this piece of tape is corresponding to is the steering wheel controls. They're telling you, make sure you set this before you plug it in, like we said. Once we've set this, we go ahead and put a piece of tape over it. The only reason why we do that on these, it's not like it's dip switches, it's just so that we know we've set it. So now it's just a matter of, with this particular harness, because it is their updated harness, it's just a matter of matching up color for color. So go ahead and connect it up. One thing I will say, the blue wire, like on a Pioneer, does not have a blue wire. You're gonna wanna connect this blue wire to the red wire. This is, like we said, the amplified antenna turn on. There's no amplifier control from this, so in the, and it's not electrical up and down. You just need this to see 12 volts when the car is on. So to do that, we'll go ahead and solder it in with the red wire. So this car has OnStar and she's doing a Pioneer. Pioneer has a yellow black wire on the back of it, which is the mute input wire, which is really made for OnStar. To make that work, we have this brown loop right here that we have to cut. So what it's saying to do is, in note eight on the instructions, is the wire inside next to the blue white wire, you want to cut it on the outside, which is this, and connect the inside, which is closest to the blue white, to that Pioneer wire. Now, when you're cutting it, make sure you leave something there just in case you need to reconnect it. So don't go and cut it flush or anything like that. Just leave a little pigtail and of course cap off the end. So the last part of the, the equation on this is plugging the actual harnesses in. Now for the most part, it's pretty straightforward, but it'll tell you on here. So you start on one side, you have the programming switch. This is the update port because sometimes these need to be updated. This one here says radio connector. So that's going to be the harness that we just wired up. It's going to just plug in. Make sure you push and pull because you don't want it to be loose. The next side here is amplified factory audio or non-amplified factory audio. These are important. So if it has like a Bose stereo, you're going to want to eat or premium sound. You want to make sure you use the amplified factory audio input. If you plug it into the non-amplified factory audio, the audio is gonna be very loud at low volumes. And the opposite is true for the other way. If you have the non-amplified, so the radio has power and you plug it into here, you'll have almost no volume. So for this situation, it is Bose, so we wanna make sure we use the amplified. And there again, plug it in and tug it to make sure it doesn't come off. And then around the other side, you have the vehicle connector. This is your main power, plug it in. And then last on here is the XM, if you're trying to retain the factory XM. You don't need to plug it in if you don't want to. Uh, if you're not retaining it, I just plug it in because it's, I gotta put the wire somewhere. So this is what you end up with, and now it's ready to go into the car. Right, so here we go. Volume up. Volume down. Mute, preset, preset, source, track up, track down, band, phone menu, answer call, yep, end call, press and hold, okay, VR. Now anytime you press, that skips over a step. So now I'll go ahead and press some buttons and let's see if all these things light up. All right, they all light up.
All right, guys, that's it. On to the next one. Mm -hmm.